James Abrisk was born in 1931 in Wood, South Dakota, about 17 miles southeast of White River. Serving for the United States House of Representatives and then the United States Senate as a Democrat, Abrisk left his mark on American politics and played a large role in the expansion and development of American Indian policies. Abrisk's parents immigrated to Wood from Lebanon in 1898. Wood, South Dakota was in those days still part of the Rosebud Sioux Indian Reservation before the federal government opened it up for white settlement in 1911. James Abris lived in South Dakota most of his life and because of his proximity to the reservations was exposed to the American Indian way of living and their relations with other races. Abris served in the United States Na Navy during the Korean War being stationed in a variety of places and assigned to a multitude of jobs. He later enrolled in college at the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology, in which he received a degree in civil engineering. His education continued at the University of South Dakota, where he received his law degree, passed the bar, and opened a legal practice in Rapid City for a time. James Abris later served on the House of Representatives for a few years and as a United States Senator after that. Senator Abras is known as being an advocate for many things, including the U.S. relations with the Middle East and American Indian Affairs. While serving as a senator, James Abras led the way in the creation of the American Indian Policy Review Commission and was elected to chair the Select Committee on Indian Affairs. The following event would forever change the life of Senator Abrisk as well as lead the way for important American Indian policies in the United States. AIM, the American Indian Movement, focused on changing the lives of American Indians in the urban environment. There was confrontation between AIM and the government, which eventually led to the takeover at Wounded Knee. AIM leaders and about 200 supporters heading to Porcupine, South Dakota, stopped at the village of Wounded Knee and took over the Trading Post Museum gas station, and several churches. Those involved in the takeover considered Wounded Knee historically significant and deemed the village an appropriate location from which to voice the concerns of AIM and the Oglala of the Pine Ridge Reservation. The takeover in 1973 marked the beginning of a conflict between AIM and the U.S. government that lasted almost three months. The goals outlined by AIM leaders included support for the reformation of tribal government as well as bringing attention to Native American grievances. The first few days of this standoff were met with gunfire between AIM members and the U.S. government. Within one day of the occupation, Senators James Abrisk and Senator George McGovern, who eventually ran for president, arrived in Wounded Knee to negotiate the release of any hostages. Negotiations began during the first few days of the takeover and continued throughout the 71 days that AIM occupied Wounded Knee. AIM and the U.S. government developed several pr proposals that were rejected by one side or the other depending on the contents. The negotiations proved difficult because of miscommunication between the groups. AIM eventually decided to end its occupation. Several factors were said to have played a part in this decision some of which included the lack of food, electrical power, medical supplies, and decreasing morale and support. The increase in the lack of support from the press, as well as the general public, may have influenced the decision of AIM leaders as well. It was Abrisk's involvement in the Wounded Knee standoff between AIM and the United States government that drove him to create the American Indian Policy Review Commission, which was essentially a two-year study of Indian policy by 11 commissioners, six congressional and five Indian. This study was different because it was the only study done by Indians, which was one of the main objectives of the commission. Nearly all of the staff members hired for the study were Indian, which was about 150 staff members. Abris claims, One of my objectives in bringing in Indians to do the work of rooting out Indian policy successes and failures 
was to build cadres of Indian leadership. Indians rarely had this type of opportunity, and the senator wanted to ensure they took full advantage of it. The official American Indian Policy Review Commission, which was submitted to Congress in 1977, outlined the concepts which must guide future policy determinations. 1. That Indian tribes are sovereign political bodies, having the power to determine their own membership and power to enact laws and enforce them within the boundaries of their reservations, and 2. That the relationship which exists between the tribes in the United States is premised on a special trust that must govern the conduct of the stronger toward the weaker. This final report, written by the Indian staff members, included several hundred recommendations for change to be implemented by the administration and Congress, these recommendations were largely ignored. The Indian Affairs Committee, which Abris was a large part of, managed to pass a few important bills. The Indian Freedom of Religion Act was one of those bills. This bill was enacted to protect and preserve the traditional religious rights and cultural practices of American Indians. The act required policies of all governmental agencies to eliminate interference with the free exercise of Native American religion based on the First Amendment. Perhaps the most far-reaching bill passed by Senator Abras and the Indian Affairs Committee was the Indian Child Welfare Act. During the two-year study of the American Indian Policy Review Commission, the members of the commission were presented with indisputable evidence that when Indian children are involuntarily removed from their families or tribes and placed in non-Indian foster care settings, a majority of them who grow out of the system end up homeless, in prison, or dead. In response to this, Senator Abras personally authored the Indian Child Welfare Act of 1978. State departments of social services are required to undertake all possible active efforts to keep Indian children with their parents before removing them from their homes. If those efforts fail, the state is obligated to provide for the preferential placement of children with their Indian relatives or tribe. Senator James Abras played an important role in American Indian policies in the United States. He has served as an ambassador for the American Indian people, especially in South Dakota.